everybody. I'm Dio Sinodinos, president of C4 Media, creators of QCon and InfoQ, and it's my pleasure to be talking today to Tejas Chopra about his presentation for QCon Plus November. Thank you for being with us, Tejas. My pleasure. First of all, Tejas, what is the focus of your work these days? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, and uh, the focus of my work these days is something called Netflix Drive. Um, and uh, that's the topic of uh, presentation as well. Um, and just a brief background on it. Uh, Netflix Drive is, a, is the paved path for storing and retrieving and managing uh, tons of media assets that are generated by Netflix Studios and streaming platforms. So you can think of it as Google Drive, uh, but on Google Drive, you have files and folders. Netflix Drive is something that artists and studios will use uh, for backing up their data. Um, and globally distributing it in a performant and scalable manner. So that's the focus of uh, what I do right now and my talk. And how would you describe the persona and the level of the target audience? We intend Netflix Drive to be a generic file system for storage. Uh, and so any software engineer uh, or architect that is, that is looking to use a cloud and on-premise based uh, or cloud based or on-premise based any sort of a backend uh, can use Netflix Drive. We plan to open source it soon. So it is a framework where different types of data stores and metadata stores can be plugged in. Um, and uh, so you can imagine it can have S3, DynamoDB, MongoDB, or other types of databases plugged in. Um, so our target audience is any architect that is working on any files, file store or asset store. You, you mentioned some of the more traditional uh, consumer cloud services for storage. What, what would be the main difference between uh, Netflix Drive and uh, any of the other uh, cloud services? Sure. Uh, so when you use cloud services, um, the number one reason that you would want to use something like Netflix Drive is that you can configure Netflix Drive using REST endpoints. So it is not just a file system. It also has APIs built into it. And for artists that work on images or photos, uh, they need to have the ability to configure their workflows. So you can imagine, let's say there's a big movie that is being created. And there are a bunch of artists that are working on different parts of the movie. You want these artists to only have access to the parts that they care about and not the entire corpus of data. Netflix Drive can enable that seamlessly with different workflows uh, and pipelines that are done in Netflix Studios today. So that is what differentiates it. The other thing is that security um, and scalability and latency are things that are first class citizens um, in Netflix Drive. Uh, so Netflix Drive um, intelligently places the data on on-premise, local and cloud systems. So it's a hybrid system that can work in conjunction with multiple backends. Uh, the other part is because it's a framework, we are exposing it to the audience so that they can plug in any sort of database or any sort of data store on the backend. So there may be folks that work with multiple cloud providers, folks that do not work with cloud at all. So they can still use the benefits of Netflix Drive uh, without being tied to any cloud provider. And, and you mentioned uh, something about general availability, open sourcing it. Are, are there any plans for that? We do plan to do it uh, pretty soon. Uh, we are working on our end to make it more robust, and then we would uh, definitely announce it. We also have a blog post on Netflix Drive on the Netflix technology blog where we talk more about the design and our plans to open source it. And uh, Tejas, finally, uh, what do you feel is the most important trend in uh, software right now? Oh, uh, I think that the world is uh, opening its eyes, its eyes to a new technology called the blockchain. So I feel that today when folks use cloud, uh, cloud is still a form of centralized storage that is owned by enterprises. Um, I feel that the next trend would be decentralized cloud, where cloud would be a combination of uh, services that are owned in a decentralized manner without a single enterprise owning it, uh, backed by the blockchain. So I, I do believe the world will move towards that direction. And the other thing I feel is that non-fungible tokens will actually come into play in our day-to-day -day lives. So today, when you scroll on social media, you see photos, images, posts on LinkedIn, all of those would be actually backed by NFT tokens on the blockchain. Um, and so every content would have a backing non-fungible token with it. That's how I think, and that's 
uh, my feeling of how software would evolve um, in the future. Is there, could there be any connection between a data storage service like Netflix, like Netflix Drive and the blockchain? Do you guys have any uh, plans to integrate it? Uh, uh, no, no, no. We, we are, uh, we just go with the traditional cloud providers at this point. But um, I feel that cloud uh, in the future would not be owned by enterprises. Uh, and so we would have to naturally evolve to see how the future goes. But insofar as Netflix Drive is concerned, right now we are based on public clouds and their interfaces that we have available today. 